Well, I'm back to my usual place. If you can see the background, yes, I'm back into my... Well, this is actually my room, in case anybody asks. But yes, I'm back from Waimas. We're going to do this. So today, we only have five reviews. The first one is from day two of Stardom's Five Star Grand Prix. Now, we're only going to have three matches involved for that for the Blue Stars. And they're, each of these matches played an important part for certain wrestlers in this one. And we'll get to that at some point. And, of course, we have the latest AEW Collision with the main event features, of course, Better Than You, Baby, and MJF and Adam Cole taking on FTR. But the obvious question does tell, can MJF and Adam Cole pull off the impossible? Can they finally pick up a tag team tiles? That is something we're going to be seeing. And then, of course, we move on with day 10 of the G1 by New Japan Pro Wrestling. And I believe we're only focusing on the C and D blocks. And then at that, we have the latest Choker Pro Show 322. We have some interesting matches, three of them to be exact. And then finally, we have NXT, the Great American Bash. So that's going to be a lot of fun to determine. We're going to have most of the titles be on the line. The tag team titles, the women's titles, the North American title. And, of course, special matches, all the whole thing. And, of course, we have some news updates to tell what's been going on in the world of pro wrestling. So, let's get ready for another episode of The Weeded Wrestle Zone. Welcome everybody to the Lead It Wrestle Zone. All things that is pro wrestling with AEW, NXT, New Japan Pro Wrestling, Impact Wrestling, the National Wrestling Alliance, various promotions, wrestlers, matches, and championships. I am your host, Jay Right here. So, if you are new to the channel, welcome. So, if you like this channel, please subscribe to us and tell all your friends that I will be giving out some good, awesome reviews for all of you. And of course, if you like this episode, give us a like and give give us a nice comment. So let's get started with our very first one. Now, for all you Stardom fans out there, as you know, we've already begun with the Five Star Grand Prix. Now, let me give you guys a fresh recap. For those who are new to this, let me explain what the Five Star Grand Prix is. Much like the G1 Climax in New Japan, Stardom has their very own tournament that's only a point-based system. Now, normal tournaments, we have eliminations, but not this one. The idea of how this works is if you win a match, you get two points. Lose a match, you get no points. However, if the competitors extended, uh, exceeded their time limit, let's say 15, 20 minutes, then each competitor will get one point. So that's been going on, has already begun not too long ago, but right now we're going to be having some interesting matches. Now, however, I did mention only three matches are been involved, and these are from the blue block. We only have three of them. Now, we're going to go from start to finish on this particular thing. Now, our first match is an opening. We have Hanako, the, the rookie, taking on the Toxic Spider. Now, you probably can guess that this match would fall in favor to Tekla due to the fact that Tekla has far more wrestling experience than Hanako. Now, Hanako is a big girl, you know, about taller, but her height would have been a factor, but no. The experience with Tekla, who's been a wrestler for far too long, has always played a good part. However, she did finish off Hanako with the Dokugumu death drop, and just like that, she picked up the win. Next up, we have Oedo Tai, consistent of Rina and Ruka, taking on Queen's Quest, Hina, and Azumi. Now, you probably can guess this type of match will be interesting with Odatai attacking, but there's a fun fact about this one. If you guys still keep up, Hina and Rina are, in fact, twin sisters. They're part of the Hanan sisters, three of them, actually. You'll see the older sister later. However, um, 
I wasn't too sure how this one was gonna go, but it was of course Azumi with the Azumi Sushi onto Ruka to pick up the win. Next up, we have the other members of Queen's Quest. We have Mayu Amasaki and Utami Ayashida taking on stars Momokogu and Azuki. Now, as you all know, Otami Ayashida came back with um, a new leaf since she went on excursion. She has learned a few new tricks. However, this match ended with Utami Ayashida trying the Shocking Blazer, which is a gut wrench where you pick up the person, drag, put them in le left, and then right, and just like that, the one person who fell victim to this move is none other than Momokogo. So basically, you can tell that Utami Ayashida is building up confidence and momentum before her match against Mayu Iwatani for the IWGP Women's Title. Now, moving on, we have the Apprentice of the Cosmic Angels, Yuma uh, Mizumori, and Natsupoi taking on God's Eye, consistent of Saki and Sudi. Now. As you all know, I mentioned many times, those who are new, you don't know this, I'm a big fan of the Cosmic Angels. Uh, but however, I think I'm more curious about Saki and Sudi. Now, I did mention that it would be an interesting dream match. But I did mention I wouldn't be surprised if those two ended up in Goddess Tag League. And if they win the entire tournament, that is something that I would be like, holy shit, that sort of thing. But it was expected but somehow i did like how sudi and saki did were able to work together well it was of course saki with the kishikase onto yuna mizumori to pick up the win so you can say that there is momentum building up between both sudi and saki i mean saki ever since she was expelled from um oedo tai she's now building up momentum for herself being in god's eye so we'll see how that plays out pretty well now our next match, this is the last match before we go with the Blue Star Block matches in the 5 star. We have Mega Megan Bain um, teaming up with Mei Sita and Suzuki. They take on the members of Stars, uh, Saya Ida, Koguma, and Mayu Iwatani. Now Mega Bain, as you guys know she is, she's a wrestler. You may have seen her here in the States. She just recently made her appearance debut. Well, not in-ring debut, but a debut in, in, the, in day one of the five-star Grand Prix attacking Tam Nakano and declaring herself the next challenger for the Red Belt. However, this one is also one of those matches where people are now get to know who, in Japan who Mega Bane is. I think they were very impressed. So I can tell you to the end that it was Megan Bane who picked up the win when she picked up Aida and applied the F5, the Brock Lesnar move, on to her to pick up the win. Zuzu apparently gave her a pretty good promo, calling her M Mega Gus, uh, Mega Sus, or something like that. I don't know. It's M E G A S U S. So basically, that's a pretty good way, and so that's her new nickname now in Japan, even though she declares herself the goddess of stardom. Now, our next, now our next three matches are involved in the Five Star Grand Prix. We're only going to focus on the Blue Stars. So let's get started. Our first match is Hanan versus Julia. Now, it's been a year since these two have come uh, cross paths together in singles competition. However, uh, Julia hasn't come off right ever since day one of the Five Star Grand Prix ended in a time limit draw when she couldn't even beat Sayori Inoue. However, this built up some good momentum for her as you know she is trying to get back on track for herself. But she did ply the glorious driver onto Hanan to give herself her two points. So she currently has one win and one draw with a total of three points. Hanan, right now she's in a very disappointing move where she hasn't won her, her first match. Last year she didn't even pick up any wins. And I'm sure she will pick up a win or two somewhere this year. So that's how it goes. Now our next match, speaking of Julia's opponent from day one, we have Sarori Anoi taking on mariah may from club venus now there has as you all know or not saru noi and mariah may and uh, saru noi and natsupoi had declared themselves the next challengers for the goddesses of stardom tag titles now saru noi did ask natsupoi if there's anything she wants for her birthday and she said she wants the tag titles however mariah may and mina shirakawa are trying to say 
that these two are not friends because they hate each other. I mean, look, we know the history between Natsupoi and Sarunou dates back all the way to their at-risk girls' days. However, you know, they decided to bury the hatchet knowing that they're like frenemies in some capacity. But Mina was trying to prove, saying they're not good friends. But ever since Sarunou made her appearance, it appears that many of the Mariah May and Mina Shirakawa are kind of curious about Sario Noi. Not because, you know, she she's the newest member of Cosmic Angels, but more of as a wrestler. Like, what is she about? Now, those who don't know much about her, she has been considered as one of the best wrestlers as a freelancer all over Japan. And I think that sets it off. Now, Mariah May, who has tried to prove that she can beat the best, well, Sario Noi. I have to say she was very impressive as, as a singles competitor, but she applied a unknown submission move. So that kind of puts it in a way saying that she's building momentum before her, her tag match with Natsupoi against Mariah and Mina. However, Mariah should be concerned now. Now, she must have thought she was tough, but Anoi was more tougher than her. So we'll see how that goes out. But however, uh, since Anoi last time in her day one of her match received one point, a draw with Julia, she gains two points. So that means she has one win and one draw. So that's the total points, much like Julia, three. Uh, but however, Mariah May only has two points. She won her first match in day one against Azumi. So that means she only has two points with one win and one loss. Now, our main event, this is a very important match. Not because I say so, it's because if you guys follow stardom, there's a lot of history be bo between both Mina Shirakawa and Mirai. Now, the history between them dates back all the way to Tokyo Yoshi Pro Wrestling. If those who don't remember Mina Shirakawa at the time, before going to stardom, she was with Tokyo Yoshi Pro Wrestling. So was Mirai, however, Mirai has no interest in trying to rekindle lost past events between them. However, last year was a very disastrous moment time for Mina Shirakawa. If those who remembered or not, or those who are unfamiliarized, Mirai was 2-0 against Mina. Basically, she already beat her twice. The first time was in last year's Cinderella tournament in the first round. And, of course, the second time was last year's, ironically, the five-star Grand Prix. Mina Shirakawa was unable to beat her. However, this has also played out pretty good well in some capacity. Now, I did mention that at some point I was thinking that Mirai would challenge Mina when she had the white belt. But because after she defeated Natsupoi, but however, that did not happen. Mina Shirakawa was selfish and decided to put her title on the line against Tam Nakano, that's what happened. But of course, we all know what happened. Mina lost the white belt to Tam. Tam lost the belt to Mirai. But this is one, it's one of those times where Mina has to dig deeper now, to realizing she has to beat Mirai. Now, Mirai has always been confident enough to beat someone like Mina. However, this time she did not. I mean, everything Mina did try to put her away did not work. Even Mirai, everything that she put in, in her soul to put Mina away did not work either. But finally, it was the figure four Mina driver to put her away. Now, this does mean that Mina may have a possibility to win the, uh, to have an opportunity to challenge for the white belt. She even mentioned in the post match promo that she will get the white belt back, but she would do whatever it takes to win this, the, the five star Grand Prix. Now, to be honest, I don't think that's going to happen. I don't think. She, it, she, I don't think she's one of those people that many have talked about that she could win. There's those that believe it's Micah who could win. Others are saying possibly, well, originally Saya Kamitani was supposed to be. But I wouldn't be surprised if Micah wins the whole thing. But it could. But we could see how that turns out. I don't believe Mina will be winning the entire tournament. So we'll see how that turns out. So right now Mina has one win and one loss with uh, just two points. Now, she did have her first loss against Utami Ayashida. That didn't go so well for her. However, Mirai, she lost her first match in the five-star Grand Prix in day one against Momo Wanabe, but she now lost this one. So she right now has two points. So this is a very 
troubling time for Mirai, so she has to dig more deeper than she's ever been. So I think that's pretty much it with Stardom. I believe it's time for AW Collision. Okay, AEW Collision. So let's get started. Our first match is a ladder match for Andrade's Mask. Now, if you guys remember, not a couple of weeks ago, Andrade's black mask that he normally wears when he comes out in the ring was taken from him by Julie Hart, member of the House of Black. Now, for a long time, Andrade has been trying to get his mask, but of course, much like the House of Black, they normally would try to. Well, Malachi Black, more specifically, tried to puts out a point saying, are you hiding behind a mask? But however, Andrade made it perfectly clear that he doesn't hide behind a mask. So, that's what's going to be. However, you probably can guess this match between Andrade and Buddy Murphy was going to be a much brutal match. It kind of did. However, there was a moment where you probably thought that House of Black, because they have the, their saying, the house always wins. Now, they were able to handcuff Andrade, but somehow uh, Andrade was able to knock out or try to disorient Buddy Murphy much as possible for Andrade to, in fact, to gra uh, grab the key and hung hack himself, but try to reach for the his mask, reach for the ladder and get the mask. However, they tried to re handcuffed again, but this time Buddy Murphy was the one who ended up being handcuffed. But, on the, but, of course, Julia brought the bolt cutters to try to cut Buddy Murphy out. However, Julia Hart tried to jump in and stop him from reaching the mask. But somehow, Buddy Murphy was able to get out of it. And, of course, the moment happened is when Andrade pushed off Buddy. And then, of course, Julia Hart got in front of him, slapped him in the face, and, of course, shoved her down right on top of Buddy Murphy through a table. Andrade reclaimed his mask. Now... Our next inter match, we had an interview with Miro. However, that inter that of course um, was interrupted by that weasel Aaron Solo. Now I, I don't know what the angle is with Aaron Solo attacking Miro. Now we know Miro has come back to you know since he's no longer God's son or whatever. But it still made no sense for Aaron Solo to attack him. But if I was Aaron Solo. I'd be more careful with Miro. That's what I would do. Now our next match, Darby Allen, of course, was in a match against someone you probably didn't expect, and that is none other than Minoru Suzuki. Now, recently, Darby Allen has picked up a good wins against M Minoru Suzuki. It, it happened during the uh, Forbidden Door and then the Battle Royale or something like that, and now this. Now, Darby Allen interrupted a Katsi Nare uh, theme during Minoru Suzuki. Now, everybody knows, do not interrupt them or else you're looking for trouble. However, Darby, we know he has like a, a sort of like a death wish. So, it's like, you know, that kind of goes out in a way. But you probably, but one thing that was very interesting, Darby pulled off the, of course, the coffin drop. But because of his size, he was able to maneuver and pin Minoru Suzuki without realizing until it was over. Darby Allen was smart enough to use his his light body and try to pin Minoru Suzuki. Suzuki was livid. He couldn't believe it. However, during the post-match, we had a surprise video message from Cl uh, Cr Christian Cage. However, he thinks that Darby is now distracted due to his issue towards Swerve. And then AR Fox. So he thinks that he's not ready for this. But Darby probably doesn't give a damn what he thinks. Now. Our next match we have Samoa Joe versus Gravity. Now this is Gravity's AEW debut on Collision. You probably can guess this match will fall in favor to Samoa Joe. It kind of did. He applied the muscle buster and just like that. Now. Tony Schiavone does another interview with CM Punk in the middle of the ring. Now, for a while, we have been trying to find out what's in the bag that the, the CM Punk has. However, we did not know what it was until he revealed that, if you guys remember, last year, after All Out, he w was still the AEW 
a world champion. However, he was never pinned or submitted. So he decided this was the very same title that he had last year. But this one was one that he decided to call it the real uh, champion, world champion. So instead of that, he puts his the X paint sprayed on it because he's straight edge. We all know that he Punk doesn't do drugs, he doesn't smoke, he doesn't drink, but that kind of sends it in. So however, it's kind of like we're doing that whole brand split in this particular night. However, Ricky Starks comes out. It appears that he uh, has his sights on that title. So it doesn't take a genius to figure that one out. But however, CM Punk called saying that he's gonna want a special guest referee because C uh, Ricky Starks have been taking advantage by cheating his way through. I mean, he already tried it with Punk. He already tried it with Darby. So he called in a favor. So he called in Ricky the Dragon Steamboat to be the special guest referee. And I think that is a very cool one to have. Now, our next match, we have members of the Bullet Club Gold, the Ass Boys, Austin and Colton, teaming with Juice Robinson to take on Darius Martin, Action Andretti, and Igor de Vikingo. Uh, you probably thought this match was going to have some spectacular moments. But however, the BC Gold are trying to put their name on the on AEW. But it was, of course, the 310 to Yuma by uh, the Ass Boys onto, uh, who was it? Onto Mar on Darius to pick up the win, just like that. Next match, we have Kara Hogan taking on uh, Mercedes Monet. We haven't seen Kara Hogan for quite some time. Uh, same thing with Mercedes Monet, but I mean Mercedes uh, Martinez. My bad, Mercedes Martinez. Uh, you probably thought this match was going to be very good. It kind of did, but however, it was um, Mercedes with the Border City um, sleeper. No, was it the Brass City sleeper onto Kara Hogan to pick up the win? However, she refused to let go of that until Chris Sandler showed up, and of course tried to defend Kara Hogan. However, Mercedes Martinez attacked her, and here comes Willow Nightingale to the rescue, and it just like that. Now, our main event features the AEW World Tag Team titles. We have Better Than You, Baby, MJF, and Adam Cole taking on FTR. I have to say, what a great main event. I have to say, seeing both teams were spectacular. I loved it. But one thing that I did like is how MJF, he's the most selfish person when you see him as a heel but he took a bullet for adam cole and of course he uh he lost when they applied the the o'connor role and lost but however adam cole was upset and and all this so he does the one thing like he he was hoping that he would stab him in the back he gave him the title like to whack him in the back of the head but mjf refused though so he chose to be friends with adam cole and i think that says it all like I, I don't know. I mean, all we have s always said that MJF was better off as a heel. But I think maybe once we should see how will this work with MJF as a face. I think that's what matters. I mean, look, we can see wrestlers can do better as as a heel or a face. So I'm kind of see how not much of a long term, let's say maybe a year or two, MJF as a, MJF as a face. So we could see something like that. So let's see how that plays out. So I think that's pretty much it for AEW. I believe we're doing uh, New Japan Pro Wrestling uh, G1. Okay, New Japan Pro Wrestling. We are in day 10 of the G1 Climax. This one recently took place on the 30th of July. Now, our first match is the C block. We have Hinare versus David Finley. Now, this was a very tough match. Now, keep in mind, Hinare, who's now changed his look, uh, dates goes back to his historical roots. Um, basically, you probably thought this was going to be a tough match, but Finley, who has proven that he is a killer, has very paid off. 
uh, but unfortunately, Hinari did not pick up the win. He ended up on the wrong side of the Into the Oblivion, and um, Finley picked up the good win. Now, this is, I think, the only reason Finley won this match, because as you guys remember, the last time, he lost to Tama Tonga, so that was his first loss. So, he right now has eight points in the tournament, with only one loss and four wins. Uh, Hinari, he only has one win and four losses. I mean, that's pretty much it. So you can say in this particular that possibly Hinari is done for like he's not going to proceed eating further. Now let's jump into the D block. Now this is a very interesting match. Jeff Cobb versus Toriano. Now we all know Toriano how he is. He's a bit of a prankster, a, a bit of a trickster. He likes to get away things. He had something in his shirt that no one knows, but he has his snacks in there of beer. Some snacks were in his damn thing. I don't know what Jeff Cobb was thinking, but however, he took a nice cold one. Now, you probably thought in your mind, now, was there anybody who could stop Jeff Cobb? Well, everybody who has challenged him has failed. But however, Yano sprayed something in his eyes, and then he applied the inside cradle. And Yano picked up the win. So this is Jeff Cobb's first loss so far. Now he's currently in a good position. He has only 8 points. Uh, so basically he'll be fine. But Yano, this is his first win. Um, well, you can say he's also done for. But uh, we'll see how how this thing end for him. Even if he doesn't make it to the, to the finals. Now we go back to the C block. We have Mikey Nichols versus... Um, Eddie Kingston, you probably know this is going to be great. I mean, the Japanese fan base love Eddie. You know, he shows a lot of gratitude for them. But it only took two back fists by Eddie Kingston to put away Mikey Nichols. One, two, three, just like that. So right now, Eddie Kingston has three wins and two losses. And then, of course, uh, Mikey Nichols only has one win and four losses, I believe. So, yeah. Now back to C D block. We have Alex Conglin versus Tetsuya Naito. Now, as you know, Conglin is a member of the Bullet Club War Dogs. You probably thought this was going to be one of the most toughest challenges. I mean, yeah. I mean, we all seen how um, the Bullet Club War Dogs, how they operate, how they try to beat their opponents and try to pick up wins. You probably thought this was going to be a tough match. Well, it did not. Um, Naito was able to pick up a nice good win against them. Uh, by applying Destino, giving him the next two points. So basically, he currently has six points with just three wins and two losses. Uh, while Conlon only has one win and four losses. Now let's jump into C block. We have Evil versus Tomo Iroishi. A lot of history between these two. Uh, but I can tell you, like always, when it comes to the House of Torture, they like to cut corners. They use various tactics to ensure the win by taking out the referee by accident, using that Dick Wad, uh, Dick Togo to do their bidding. But Evil did everything exactly what he was supposed to do. He applied everything as Evil to pick up a win against Ishii. So he currently has only 8 points with 1 loss. Um, that loss that he had was against David Finley, but Ishii currently only has 2 points and 4 losses. So... I could say maybe he is done for, but we'll see how that plays out. Now, our next block, we have a TMDK showdown. We have, of course, Shane Haste taking on his pal, his mate, the frontman of TMDK, um, of course, Zack Sabre Jr. But what's interesting, that even though it's not related to the match, is the person who's outside the ring. Uh... The Ichiban sweet boy. Kosa Vegeta is torn. Because he wants to support both of them. But he only has to pick one. So he kind of put himself in the middle. Just kind of like a, a, a child watching mom and dad fight against each other. So that kind of way. But nonetheless it was a pretty good hard hitting match. But you probably would have thought that maybe Zack Sabre Jr. would have pulled something out of his out of his hat. Well, he did. He applied the European clutch and picked up a good win. So he currently ha is in a good position with only eight points, uh, with just four wins and one loss. As for Shane Ace, he only has two wins and three losses. So he's in a good, 
good position at the at this time, but we'll see how far we progress from that. Now let's jump into C block. We have Shingo Tagagi and Tama Tonga. I have to say, good match, hard hitting. I mean, you can call it a hot hoss fight if you want, but nonetheless, I mean, Shingo and Tama are two of the, the most absolute best wrestlers I've ever watched. You know, I'm a fan of Lij and Tama, but unfortunately, this match ended in a time limit draw. Um, you probably wouldn't expected it, but it did. So at this point, um, they have each one draw. So at this point, since they get one point each, um, Shingo only had four points. So that means he had two losses, you know, two wins and three losses. As for Tama, he only has, he was six points. So he had three wins and two losses. So that's, that's how it goes. But they're both in a good position at this point. But we'll see how far the grip. But however, Tama was... I think it, he was in the finals or semifinals, one and two last year. But yes, we'll see. Now our next match, we have the D block. Hiroshi Tanahashi, the ace, taking on Higoki Goto. Uh, you probably would have thought this match would fall into Goto, but keep in mind, X factor of this match is the ribs on Goto. Last time, those ribs were used against him by um, Alice Coughlin, but... Uh, fortunately, it was Hiroshi Tanahashi who beat him by applying high five flow, giving him a good, impressive win. So, at this point, uh, Tanahashi has uh, six points with three wins and two losses. Gota only has four points with two wins and three losses. So, that's how it goes from there. So, we'll see what happens. Now, the next um, Net New Japan of um, G1 will be on August 1st. That's going to be part of Tuesday Wrestling. So... Uh, since today is uh, July 30, uh, 31st, we'll see how that goes. But, nonetheless, let's move on to the next review, and I believe we're doing Choco Pro. Okie dokie. Choco Pro with their latest show, 323. Uh, this one took place also on the 30th of July. Now, of course, the opening is Emmy Sakura giving her the lay down about the matches, who's going to be involved, and this and that. But nonetheless, it's going to be a good show. So let's start with that. Our first match is a singles match. We have new the newcomer rookie Nonoka Seto versus Sayaka. Now. To be fair with everybody, I kind of figured this match was going to go with Sayaka. Now, the reason I say this is because Sayaka has a bit more experience than Nonoka Seto. Now, Sayaka may not be one of the most popular girls in Gato Move slash Choco Pro, but however, I've often say how much she has grown uh, for, for a time. I mean, look, I'm not saying Sayaka's one of the favorites. But I have always admired how much she has changed, how much she has grown, how much she has developed that aggressiveness. And I think that sets up. But however, the only difference between this, Nonoka Seto, since her debut, she has shown a bit of the aggressiveness. Even when matches like go, go on in a time limit draw, she forgets that she has to stop. But however, Sayaka, who is has far more better experience, played out pretty well. Uh, this match ended with her with a submission move. Now, you probably thought that Seto was disappointed, but of course, Seto, as time goes by for her, she'll grow and she'll grow until she finally will pick up that first win that she needs. So, and that was not today. Now, our next match is, of course, um, our tag match. Speaking of Nonoka, her sister, Mia Yotsuba, teams up with Toki Kokihara to take on the best bros, one of my favorite tag teams in Choco Pro. We're talking about Mei Shiruga, the Big Apple, and Balinaki. Now, I would say X Factor is Mia Yutsuba, much like her sister, uh, who's been with the pro when been with the promotion for about a year, hasn't picked up a a big win yet. However, she has picked what won a three way match, but she was not the one to initial the, the the win, but she was part of the winning team in a trios match. However, she teams up with one person from that 
trios match, Tokiko Kihara. And the best bros, as you know, they're no slouches. You know how they work. They are coexist, you know. They, they're like the odd balls of the, of the whole thing. But nonetheless, it was, of course, the um, Balinaki with the Mahestral on Tokiko Kihara to pick up the win. So that kind of ends it right there. Now it's only a matter of time on Best Bros until they go back to their tag team title roots uh, to get those tag titles back. But that's not going to be today. But however, we move on to our final match. We have another tag match. We have Masahiro Takanashi and Emi Sakura. Now I forgot what their tag team name was, but they take on the Ektarts, Chiko Shikawa and Hagane Shino. Um, I have to say, pretty good match. Now Hagane. In, the, in the, recently, not too long ago, told Chiko Shikawa that she needs to grow up, that she needs to stop relying on Hagane as a protector, that she needs to grow up and be equal to her, and that is a good thing because she Hagane has often said how he observes the best bros that they're equal, and of course she has now grown up into that. However, it was a pretty good match until I'm not sure what moved the, if I saw it completely with. Tana, uh, with Masa and, and Sakura they s did some like a somewhat version of the of the magic killer I'm not sure that was the case but Masa and Emi Sakura picked up the win now for our Jonkin tournament I can tell you the best bro was out but I can tell you by the end of this it ended with two friends who started together it's, since they are members of, part of the fourth generation of Got to Move and Choco Pro we're talking about Sayaka and Chiko Shikawa now both of them have won Jonkin tournaments before, but this is a very hard one because they both have teamed up together. They are good friends, but only, there can only be one, and that one turned out to be Sayaka. So that pretty much sets it in. Um, but of course, more info that came in during the post show for the upcoming Got to Move that's going to happen on August 16th. I forgot the matches. I know there were tag matches involved. But we'll see how that goes. I will gather more info and hopefully put that in the next episode of the news updates. So I think that's pretty much it. So let's move on with our final review. NXT, The Great American Bat. Okay. NXT the great american bash now we normally don't talk about the kickoff show but however i was told this was a really good one uh we had a simple eight person tag match a mixed tag match with referee's discretion we have dragon lee lisa leone valentina Ferraz, and of course the current uh nxt heritage cup winner um uh, Nathan Frazier taking on all members of Metaphor Jakara, uh, Jackson, Lash Legend, uh, Aura Mensa, and of course the so called real uh, NXT Heritage Cup with, uh, champion Noam Dar. But I have to say, what a good match! Now, the best moment I did like about this match is how everybody did a spectacular moment when, of course, um. The Ulysses alone lift up Valentina Frost high in the air and landed on top of um, Last Legend. And of course, then later, uh, Nathan Frazier calls Ulyssa and then she jumped off and landed on Noam Dar. And then, of course, uh, a Hurricane Rana by. I have to say, what a good match. I have to say, th this could have been part of the main card if it had the. The qual I mean, it does have the quality to be a part of the main card, but it was a pretty good match. But however, it was Dragon Lee who picked up the win on Oron Mensa. I don't know if he applied like a somewhat version of Decino. If you guys remember, there's history between him and Naito since his older brother is good friends with him. But it was a pretty good match, I have to nonetheless. But it was Lee, Leon, Foros, and Frazier that picked up the good win. Now let's jump into the main um, to the main card of this of this show. We have NXT Tag Team Titles on the line. The Family, uh, Tony D'Angelo and Shannon Stack Lorenzo is taking on the Gallus Boys. 
um, Mark Coffey and Wolfgang with Joe Coffey in their corner. Now, this whole thing began when, of course, a long time ago, when Tony D'Angelo thought that maybe it's time for them to proceed for tag team goal. But, however, Gallus, who refuses to acknowledge that, decided to play uh, dirty on them, setting Tony D'Angelo up. Uh, Stax came up with the idea of, you know, try to do something. But, however, it played out pretty well. However, they got what they wanted, but you probably would have thought they would have played dirty tricks. Uh, however, they almost did, but luckily for Tony D, he used a crowbar on Joe Coffey, take him out, and then, of course, it was the bada-bing, bada-boom, on to Wolfgang by um, Tony D to pick up the win, and we have brand new NXT Tag Team Champions. So that's a pretty good one. Now... Our next match is a weapons wild match between Roxanne Perez and uh, Blair Danvenport. Now, this particular match happened after mysterious attacks happened with Wendy Chu, Nikita Lyons, and then recently, of course, Roxanne Perez. It revealed to be none other than Blair Danvenport, and her target was Roxanne Perez, who believes someone like her shouldn't be in NXT, that little girls like her are not meant to be in places, but Roxanne Perez, of course, recently attacked uh, Davenport in a convenience store, and of course, you see a much aggressiveness with Roxanne Perez than you ever seen. You probably think, did um, Blair Davenport trigger this? I mean, you can say it did, but nonetheless, that this match was pretty great until Roxanne Perez applied the pop rocks, picking up the good win. So. The obvious thing is, well, Roxanne finally can put this behind her and move forward where she needs to go. We know, as you know, she probably will be aiming for the NXT women's title in the future or so. So we'll see what happens till then. Now, our next match, we have Baron Corbin uh, taking on uh, Gable Stevenson. This is his debut. As you know, Baron Corbin has been had issues towards wrestlers from the NXT. Is more like saying that he thinks that this thing has to be put it in but however his usual gimmicks have not worked out so he kind of reinvent himself better than he ever was but this match got out of hand between both men so it ended up in a count out but you can say that a lot of fans were not happy but they continue on with this match uh even though it uh how do i say it was already done but Nonetheless, Gable probably will get another opportunity with this one. Now, Kyria Valkyria, Lyria Valkyria, as you know, has had a very impressive match against Rhea Ripley. So, basically, she has two things in mind. One, pursuing the NXT Women's title. But, however, she has to deal with a pain in her ass, and that is none other than Jay-Z Jane, who, as Jay-Z Jane cannot, uh, feels like, what is people seeing in Lyra Valkyria? So she has she has a bit of jealousy. But this started a fight between them. And of course Ripley showed up. Now this is what I'm talking about. So that could possibly happen. We don't know when will this match between Valkyria and Jay-Z Jean will take place. But I wouldn't be surprised if this would be involved in a number one contendership for the NXT women's title. That is something I probably could see. Now speaking of mommy Rhea ripley her dom dom has to put up his title on the line in a three-way match against wesley and mustafa ali now this was something that came about but there were mo the best moment is of course they took out mustafa ali wesley was about to jump even Rhea ripley tried to told him not to he did it anyway but he brought the classic rascal mo um thing you know like mm -hmm. And, of course, he was chasing him. Now, Rhea Ripley actually put him through the the commentary desk when he applied the Riptide, thinking that was it. It didn't work. Then, of course, tried the belt. It didn't work. And then, of course, Don was trying to apply the uh, Frog Splash. But out of nowhere, Mustafa Ali uh, kicked him out. And then, of course, he applied the 450 Splash. He had this match won, but Mommy got involved once again. And then Ed and Dominic applied the, four, the frog splash just like that, retaining his title. So, 
it was a very buzz kill like that. So we'll see who shows. But however, apparently Dom is fully aware that Dragon Lee has issued permission towards uh, his dad, towards uh, Rey Mysterio, the challenge for the North American top. But they're calling Dom and uh, to- uh, they were calling Dragon Lee as um, a Rey Mysterio wannabe. That he is not an original. I mean, he is an original. He calls himself Dragon Lee for a specific reason. And of course, he thinks that that he is going to retain the top. But there's still no yet when that will happen. So we'll see. Now, prior before our main event, Trick Williams, who has no fond of what has been going on between Dragon Off, as you know, he says that screw you about. How much you respect my friendship with uh, with Mello. So he's not feeling what he's saying. He thinks of him that he's full of himself and all that. So we'll see how this. Now this is going to be a top cha- tough challenge for Mello until we get there. So let's get moving to the next match. Which was of course the NXT Women's title. I have to say Tiffany was showing her dominance. Of course you, you have to wait for that specific moment when you think... The they hell will surprise us with the Kimura lock. Of course, probably Tiffany Strand was well aware that anything is a possibility, but Tiffany Strand put a the hell in a submission move. Refu- but Hale refused to give up. But Chase, oh, uh, Andre Chase, who cares, had to make a judgment call, so he had to throw in the towel because the more uh, Tiffany Strand was applying pressure on her, the more she could hurt her and put her out of commission. So you can say it was a disappointing loss, but Under Chase did what he thought was best. So we'll see what happens then. Now, we do see a little clip that they posted last Tuesday on NXT where Schism were questioning about what happened. Now, um, the Dyad and Joe Gazy ended up in a trios match against Melo, Williams and Dragonov, but however, two members of their followers were in fact started this mess. But here's the thing: now the conspiracy has begun. Where, of course, um, what's the name? Rip Fowler believes that the people behind this was none other than Creed Brothers. However, Ava Reigns doesn't believe it's him. So. Joe Gaz- but Joe Gacy has no clue what to do with this. So Ava Reigns decided, let's do a schism interrogation. So the obvious thing is, who who really caused this mess? Well, we'll see how that goes. Now let's jump into our main event, which is the NXT title. Ilya Dragunov versus Carmelo Hayes. You can say that Dragunov pushed Melo Hayes to the limits. I mean, he did everything that he can. However, Melo has to dig in a lot more deeper. Knows that he's not facing a slouch. He knows he's facing against the most toughest, the craziest, and most dangerous competitor that he has to face. But it he only needs one shot to end it, and that's exactly what he did. He did nothing but net and to retain his title. So I have to say, Melo Hayes really, really put up, went through his limits, but he was able to retain the top so uh, for the next NXT show we'll probably ask ourselves what's next well we'll see who will be the next challenger we will be seeing a lot of challengers coming in their wake but I think that's pretty much it right now for NXT I believe it's time to move on with our final thing news updates Okay, welcome to our news update. So this is what we have for everyone. Now, as you know, we are still adding more wrestlers involved for the All-Star Junior Festival USA that will take place on the 19th of August. We have, for our 20th entry, all night long. That's right, Rich Swan will be involved. Our 21st entry is none other than Matt Seidel. And finally... 
our 22nd entry is Soberano Jr. So these are the latest entries they announced, so I'm so excited for this one. Now for upcoming uh, women's promotion taking place in LA in October, they announced two new Nate talents to be involved. We have from both from Japan, Hibiscus Me and Chikayo Nagashima. So that's going to be great. So if you guys are fans of them, you should check it out. Now, a recent tweet t took place back on the 30th of July by Willow Nangyo. Apparently, uh, Willow Nangyo has been told, told fans who were supposed to be in that saying that she was booked in an Ohio uh, promotion. Uh, she kind of confessed that she was not part of it. Uh, let me pull up the that tweet right now because I'm sure many people are confused. This is what she had to say. So sorry to any of you Ohio babes who may have been disappointed, but I was never contracted to appear at a at the Wrestling Under the Stars event uh, on that particular day. I'm I always promote all my confirmed appearances on my socials, and and do hope to see all my friends on some some other time. Now let's talk about this a little bit. There have been reports, if you guys remember, we have here wrestlers that are saying they were promoted for this independent, this independent show. We've seen that with Mandy Rose already after she was let go from WWE last year. So it's not uncommon that things like that happen because we normally will hear this from the actual wrestlers. Like, they're confirmed that they will be there. Now, the promotion will announce it, but the wrestlers will confirm, yes, we will be there. So it looks like that that's not the case in this particular one. So it sucks, but it is what it is. Now, uh, Impact Wrestling has announced for a debut this coming week. We have Samurai Del Sol. You may know him as Calistico back in WWE. He will be actually making his debut. Uh, can't wait to see him. So that's going to be fun. Now, I still am confirmed if he is a full signed member. We know recently he had appeared in AEW before, but who knows? We'll find out soon enough. MLW has announced for the September 3rd event, Fury Road. Uh, we're going to have Becca taking on the cutest in the world, Maki Ito. That's going to be a lot of fun. I have to say, I'm looking forward to that match. Now, two updates from West Coast Pro. Now, uh, for the t the 14th uh, of October for the West Coast uh, 5 anniversary show uh, Marvelous Star and the current champion the AAW champion Mia Momono will be making her return to the promotion however uh, West Coast Pro's announced for the exchange with Marvelous Titus Alexander will be making his trip to Japan Work training and working with Marvelous. That's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, promotion Full Impact Pro has announced that uh, they have a brand new uh, World Heavyweight Champion, and that is none other than our current uh, Deadlock Pro Wrestling World Champion, Lucky Ali. A Canadian promotion, uh, Nation Extreme Wrestling, has announced for their second anniversary show uh, that will be taking place in September. Uh, they announced that AEW referee Aubrey Edwards will be making her appearance. So she's going to lay down the law on that one. Now, this is a very interesting one that I definitely wanted to put in. Those who seen DDT Pro Wrestling, as you guys know, they have done two wrestling shows inside trains. Yes, you heard me right, trains. However, they had multiple wrestlers in, the, in those particular shows, but this one... Is a very unique one. They're not going to be in. They're going to be in a uh, Shinkase Pro Wrestling. It's a Shinkase tr Bullet Train. So there's going to be two wrestlers participating in this particular one. That is none other than Murder Grandpa himself, the King Minoru Suzuki, taking on the boss of DDT Pro Wrestling. We're talking about Shinshiro Takagi. 
So these guys had tangled before uh, a couple years back. They did a match in the Tokyo Dome when there was no one there, and it was a lot of fun. So that's a real good one to watch. Now, more information has come up about the U.S. promote the U.S. Yoshi promotion that will be launching in the fall. Uh, they said that they're focusing on developing short and long-term um, anime. Apparently, they want to do something similar like Lucha Underground. Now, keep in mind, the Lucha Underground stuff was based on storylines that they were doing, like kind of like TV show. Uh, something that's been done. However, they actually announced that Risa Sarah will be participating, but her name will be modified. So, who knows what's going to happen. Now, as you know, last week on Friday, uh, Rey Mysterio was injured. Many people thought it was a work. However, it's now been confirmed by many sources. Even Sean Rapsep has contacted WWE saying that, yes, Rey Mysterio really legit was hurt. And uh, this was supposed to be a match where um, Santos Escobar was going to win this match clean. However, due to what happened, it ended like that. But all we can do is hope that Rey Mysterio uh, fully recovers. Uh, Santo Escobar's, I know he felt like this is not how he wanted it. But, of course, this is his mentor and friend that I'm sure that uh, he'll make him proud to win the U.S. title. Now, Defy Wrestling has announced for three matches coming up for um, August 12th. For Violent Minds, we have Titus Alexander taking on Judas Akaris. Cody Shun taking on Clark Connors and Ninja Mac against Artemis Spencer. Now, GCW updates. For the No Signal in the Hills on the 11th of August, we have Los Macizos, uh, Medio Extremo Ciclosa, teaming up with Little Cholo to take on Unguided 2.0. Now, for the homecoming on 20th of, of August, Becca will be making her debut, but however, a match has been announced for that particular day. We have Dragon Kid taking on Commander. Now, uh, here's some article things that have been announced by Fightful Select. Uh, as you know, recently I reported that Dustin Rhodes, his contract with AW was coming to an end. However, Fightful Select has reports that uh, there's been a new deal has been in place and uh, Dustin Rhodes will be remain in AEW. Now, uh, Cody Rhodes spoken about he had plans that he wanted to wrestle Sting uh, in AEW. Now, this is what he said. Uh, let me pull it up real quick for everyone. This is what he said. I was going to wrestle Sting. I don't think I've ever shared that with anybody and nobody and nothing was on paper or anything like that. But I can say I got a tremendous offer from AEW creatively financially in the full package you don't hear me say anything bad about AEW or tony khan or my time there it was a tremendous offer but the offer wasn't right for me what i wanted is to get back was get back to was the first goal that i ever had winning the wwe championship but yeah that probably would have been been my end game but uh, that's what been discussing the was to get one match with one of my heroes, Sting. So I hope Cody does have that opportunity because I'm because recently Sting mentioned that he has something cooked. Uh, many people thought maybe believe that he probably will end his um, career here soon, but we'll see. Now, recently uh, reports came in that Richard Holiday was in fact at the backstage. On AW Collision during tapings, uh, Richard Holiday, if you guys know, he became a free agent after leaving MLW. He recently returned to the ring at a GCW event after he was battling cancer, so he's now in remission. So he's 100%. Now I wouldn't be surprised if Richard Holiday teams up with MJF to reform the dynasty, but anything could happen. So we'll see. Now our final Fightful Select article. This was reported that. Uh, Aaliyah James, who you may have seen on NXT UK, has announced that she will be departing from the company. She was originally supposed to be part of the NXT Europe, but however, that um, that concept was axed. So she announced that she'll be leaving the promotion. Now, we have seen many wrestlers who were part of that left because um, things like that happened. 
so we don't know. Now, I saved this one for last for all you Saya Kamitani fan base. Now, I did mention uh, for all of you that Saya Kamitani will be out of the Five Star Grand Prix tournament, but however, uh, she'll be out for the remainder of the year. Now, it's still no telling when she'll be back, but however, the obvious question is, I did say, now that Kamitani is out of the tournament, what's going to be the situation? Will there be a substitute or uh, or they will uh, give her opponents the, uh, the two points out of forfeit? Well, it's now been confirmed that there will be no substitute for Kamitani and everybody in the Red Star block will be receiving their two points. So that sets it right there. So that kind of put it right there. So now it's been... Uh, confirmed and now we don't need to talk about it so uh but all we can say is we hope that she recovers well and hopefully but of course the initial report came in that she was supposed to win the five star this is something that we saw with julia back in uh 2021 but that match ended with sudi winning that tournament so the obvious thing is who most likely could win the tournament now I would say if it was me, I would say it could be Micah who could win the tournament. So that is the obvious thing that I would think in this scenario. But we'll see how that turns out. So I think that's pretty much it for our news updates. So it's time to call it a day. Well, I hope everybody enjoyed this episode. Yes, uh, for those who probably saw my last video, I was in Wyamas for a couple of days. Now to uh, reassured about how this happened, uh, when that I came back, I came back on the 30th of Jul on 31st of July, uh, left Wamas on the 30th and came back on the 31st. Uh, it was like a 16-hour bus ride from there. Uh, the only thing that kind of s slowed us down was the checkpoints heading back north. And, uh, there is a checkpoint going south, but going north. That's a different story. Uh, but I made it safe, made it sound. I uh, was able to review, watch and review every event that I missed out from then. But I'm glad I got to do this. Now, since we're entering Tuesday Wrestling, uh, the only thing I will be announcing that I, uh, will be confirmed is the G1 Climax. We're in day 11. We'll be focusing on A and B blocks. Uh, we do have... I think we do have NWA power. And of course, uh, NXT entering their fallout after the Great American Bash. Uh, if there's anything else, I'll see how that turns out. But for now, we'll just end it right here. And I will see you guys in the next DWZ time. Same DWZ channel. I must bid all of you adieu. So, goodbye. And have a nice day. Bang.